Hello, and welcome to our video. We are Team 19, Steam Turbine Exhaust Monitoring. The group members are Nestor Camacho, Todd Kingston, Devin Leskowski, Anthony Marcello, Randall Rosenloff, and Austin Zobel. And our faculty advisor was Dr. Tim Emil. Due to increases in the use of renewable energy, such as solar and wind, traditional power plants are running into new challenges. We're working with Pacific Core to overcome challenges that they have been facing with one of their steam turbines. The power output of wind and solar is variable as it depends on factors like wind speed or light intensity. With varying power coming from renewable energy sources, the steam turbine must also vary its output to meet grid demand. Traditional steam turbines, especially those from the 1950s, like the one investigated in this project, are meant to modulate output power near 100% capacity. However, when power output from renewables is highest, the turbine must ramp down to operating around 20% capacity. Operating at the low extreme of the steam turbine's capacity is causing undesirable flow conditions, particularly near the last set of turbine blades. It's been observed that ramping down capacity causes steam flow to reverse and travel back into the turbine blades, which causes vibrations and can lead to costly fractures and wear and tear. Because the undesirable flow conditions happen particularly near the last set of turbine blades, we've been asked to create a sensor array to monitor the flow conditions at this outlet. The primary concern is reverse flow and the device must be able to measure flow velocity in multiple directions. We'd also need an ability to determine when undesirable flow arises in real time, which will allow operators to quickly change turbine operation to prevent damage. There are four main metrics that comprise our project scope. One, we need to accurately characterize the flow dimension at this last set of turbine blades. Two, it needs to fit within the turbine opening which is less than three feet in diameter. Three, it needs to withstand temperatures up to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, as well as high humidity. And four, we need to keep it under our project budget, which is $5,600. So now let's go over our final design. Our team went through multiple prototypes over the course of this project. Most of them use the same hardware, just used in different configurations. Our final prototype is shown here. Our design is a sensor array composed of eight pitot tubes, each spaced 45 degrees apart from each other. The sensor array is connected to a tube that can rotate in the XY plane and move in the Z direction. This is done in case the position of our prototype within the turbine needs to be changed. We chose pitot tubes as our measurement instrument because they allow us to measure the velocity of the flow going into the tubes. By creating an array of pitot tubes like we have, we can get multiple data points for flow velocity at different points in space, which allows us to form a good idea about the flow conditions the sensor is in. To validate our prototype, we need to find an environment that would in some ways mimic that of the turbine. Though not an exact replica of the flow conditions in the turbine, a wind tunnel would provide somewhat similar flow conditions that would allow us to test our hardware and software. We determined our best option was a wind tunnel in the TIFAS lab in the Merrill Engineering Building. Our team was already familiar with the hardware in that lab from previous classes, and the existing pitot tube and related hardware already installed in Winto could serve as a way to verify the results from our prototype. Each pitot tube was individually tested against the wind tunnel's pitot tube, and the difference in measurements was negligible. The results from our prototype testing at a wind tunnel fan speed of 50 Hz is illustrated in this diagram. The magnitude of the flow speed measured by each pitot tube is indicated by the color bar. The results do make sense intuitively, as the pitot tubes facing towards the flow read the highest speeds, and those facing away from the flow read the lowest speeds. The results will be explained in further detail in the following graphs. The team performed testing at two different wind tunnel fan speeds, 25 and 50 Hz. In each case, our prototype took five readings per second for 10 seconds. The graphs shown indicate the average speed measured by each pitot tube for the 10 second testing period along with the standard deviation bars. The standard deviation bars are indicators of the uncertainty in the measurements, caused by changes in the pitot tube speed measurements during the testing period. 
The graph shows that there is very little uncertainty in measurements in the pitot tubes facing towards the flow. The uncertainty does increase in the pitot tubes facing away from the flow, which is potentially due to turbulence caused by the sensor array itself. Welcome to a hands-on look at our prototype. So, as you can see, we have eight pitot tubes in a circular arrangement around the end of this. Each pitot tube has multiple static pressure ports on the sides and a, a dynamic pressure port on the tip. Those are inserted into this piece, which is a 3D printed piece that holds them together in the circular arrangement and connects to this PVC pipe. This pipe is where these tubes are moving through. They come out and go to these Arduinos here. This Arduino is reading analog data from this, the seven of the pitot tubes, and this Arduino is reading digital data from one of the pitot tubes. We will now go over to the wind tunnel to show you this prototype in action. We have our prototype installed. Right here we have a 3D printed piece that we made to mount it to the wind tunnel. And this piece is a pretty tight fit with this PVC pipe, and that allows us to move it in and out, like so. So we can actually measure the velocity profile of the wind tunnel using our prototype. Um, we're going to have flow coming in this direction, and as you can see inside there, there is a one tube facing into the flow, and we're going to take, be taking measurements from that tube and the other four tubes along the top all the way back to this tube back here. So I'll now turn the wind tunnel on. It's 25 hertz, which is about half the speed of the wind tunnel. And you can see some measurements on the screen as it ramps up to, to full speed. Right now we're at 25 hertz. Now I'm bumping up to 50 hertz, which is the top speed of the fan. You'll be able to see with the recordings on the screen how the measurements change with the fan speed. We're now at 50 hertz.